This is George from High Tech Legion. Over the years we've seen Cooler Master do a fantastic job with bringing a mechanical and automotive theme into the computer world. The half series of cases and of course the V series of coolers. We saw the initial V8 followed by the V10, uh, the wildly successful V6 series, and now an update to the uh, three tower V8 series, the new V8 GTS. Now, there's no question that the V8 GTS is an update to the original VT, uh, V8, I should say. Um, now, much like what we're seeing in the auto industry with Camaro, Mustang, and Challenger, they are reminiscent of the original models, but they are distinctly modernized and upgraded. And we're seeing the same with the V8 GTS right here. Now, let's take a quick look at the box, um, which does list a couple of the features right off the bat. The V8 GTS does use a horizontal vapor chamber. Triple phase tower heatsink, which is the same as the V8, but once again updated, and self lubricating bearing system uh, on the fans. So you've got a dust proof self lubricating bearing system, like I say, on the fans, longer life, quieter performance. Going over to the side, a couple of key specs that we do see here. Height of the V8 GTS is a very large cooler, as we say, dimensions of 154 by 149.8 length and width, and a height of 166 and a half centimeters. That is something you're going to have to take into consideration, uh, depending on your case. 240 millimeter fans, PWM, 600 to 1600 RPM, capable of 82 uh, CFM at 36 dB. Weight on the entire installed unit is 1,140 grams. So large cooler, it is a bit on the heavy side. Of course, compatible with all of today's uh, current sockets. Intel LGA 2011, 1366, 1156, 1155, 1157, 75, and the AMD uh, AM23 and FM1 and 2. Taking a look at the V8 GTS itself, as we say, it is a very, very large cooler, as you can see, very, very wide. But it actually has an odd se uh, seating in the case, so it's going to sit more towards the back than uh, you're typically used to. It's not going to be overhanging the ramp slots as much. It's going to sit a little further back. Um, now, as far as the theming of the automotive updated absolutely hits the nail on the head. All black, as you can see, totally shrouded up top. Does have red LEDs, we'll see later. So it does look like uh, you've got a burning going on under the hood, per se, but really fantastic looks. Uh, notched with the Vs up top, as you can see, Cooler Master logo. Once again, fans covered and small shrouds over the outer heat sinks, uh, or I should say the outer heat towers themselves. Now, going down the bottom, as you can see, large horizontal vapor chamber sits right on the CPU with eight six millimeter heat, heat pipes sitting directly on top of the horizontal vapor chamber. Uh, the arrangement of the heat pipes, you've got two going to each of the outer towers and four going up through the center tower. Now, it is a little bit hard to take a look, as you can see from the side, get a good look at one of the side towers. Uh, it is asymmetrical, so get a look over here as well. And looking straight on, you can see you've got the two side towers, center tower up the middle with the fan sandwich between the towers right here. So let's take it apart and actually get a look at what we've got as far as the tower. Now, it's somewhat unusual. The fans are actually held in by four screws, two on each side, right up at the top of the fan. I've removed the first three, and now Take the final screw out of the fan collars. Comes out. And the fans will lift out. Now, one of the things you see for the LEDs up in the top, you do have an LED lead. Fans are actually plugged into that as well with the included Y connector for the fans, one four, PW, or one four pin PWM on the end, two four pin PWMs. Uh, taking a look, as you can see, shrouds are not connected. Fans themselves, 140 millimeter, 600 to 1600 RPM. 
82 CFM. Uh, you see the fan design blade we've seen before on the uh, Cooler Master CPU fans in the past. Does make for a bit more air movement with a little bit lower noise. And finally, taking these pieces out of the way, we can get a look at the tower itself. And as I say, triple tower design, two heat pipes coming up from the bottom, going into each side of the outside towers, as you can see. Center tower, all aluminum fins throughout, four heat pipes going straight up through the center tower itself. Very interesting design, very unique, obviously. Um, very similar to the older V8, but obviously adding horizontal vapor chamber, as well as much larger than the old V8. Uh, also a very interesting look. Good looking, all six millimeter heat pipes, and as I say, LED lead for the center. Taking a look at the accessory kit, start off with the paperwork, warranty information, English user's manual and installation guide, well illustrated, as you can see, easy to follow, and multilingual installation guide. Got separate AMD and Intel backplates, two sets of AMD retention brackets. Uh, this way you can choose the dir uh, direction of your airflow and the cooler can be mounted with front to rear or top to bottom firing. Intel retention brackets, tool you'll need for tightening everything, small tube of thermal paste, and your standoffs and washers. The installation kit for the VHETS is very distinctly a Cooler Master um, installation kit. There's no question about that. Uh, it's got all the earmarks with the standoffs and uh, the wrenches included, etc. Now, first step we're going to have here is putting our brackets into place. We're going to be using Intel, so I'm putting the Intel bracket. Of course, uh, AMD bracket would go there as well, or the alternate AMD bracket, and it will go Underneath, as you can see, line up the hole, one screw goes in through the bottom plate and into place, and of course repeat on the other side. Now, tower is prepped, all ready to go in. Now, one thing you'll notice, I left the fans out for the installation. Uh, in the installation instructions, it does not tell you to take the fans off at any point. However, it's going to make life easier, which you're going to see in a couple of minutes, uh, getting to a couple of the bolts that are going to need to be put in. So I would definitely recommend you taking the fans out before starting your installation. Next, we're going to install the back plate. Now, the back plate uh, itself, as you can see, all of your screws are notched with three positions. Choose the correct position for your socket and it simply slips right through the holes. Next, unpack the four standoffs. And we'll turn the motherboard around. As you can see, you've got four screws coming through right around the socket from the back plate and standoff will screw right onto there. And these only need to be hand tight. You want them snug. You don't want to over tighten. And put your four standoffs into place, which the cooler is going to mount to. Now you'll notice it's a little tight in the corner. Now the saber tooth board I'm using obviously is exaggerated as far as a heat sink goes, or it seems exaggerated, but it's actually not. Anything with tall and joining heat sinks, this corner is going to be very difficult to get to, uh, which you're going to see not only with this, but also with the tie down bolt. Now, like I say, <clears throat> the saber tooth ball uses a solid cover. Uh, if this were actually just heat sink, and open to here, you know, it would look less imposing, but you're still going to have the same issue. Uh, even with just a heat pipe going between the two, 
you might have an issue as well. So that is something to bear in mind. Uh, and a big reason I told you, you're going to need to take the fans out in order to install the cooler. I've applied the thermal interface material to the CPU. As you can see, we've got the four standoffs ready. Now, very important, of course, make sure you take off the warning sticker over the base itself. As you can see, you've got a nicely milled base on the horizontal vapor chamber. And we're just going to drop the cooler, line up four holes with four standoffs, and drop the V8 GTS into place. and drops down just like that. Now we're going to use four of the nuts to tighten it down. And you will tighten these down all the way to the standoffs. Not a high pressure mount, not springy whatsoever. Now as you can see, with fans in, you're going to have great difficulty getting these. You're going to have a much easier time with the fans out. It's still going to be a problem, like I say, over in this corner getting to it because you're only going to be able to grab from one side. So you are going to have to have a little dexterity or you can break out with a magnetic screwdriver and, you know, wiggle it on there. But that is going to be your point of most concern. Once you've got all four on, just tighten it down using the included wrench. And you can go in from the side, as you see. And of course, tighten in an X pattern, going back and forth, tighten a little bit at a time. And once you've got all four tightened up and towers mounted, you can drop your fans back into place. Of course, making sure you've got your airflow going in the right direction on both. And with the fans back in place, you can line them up, as you'll see. Holder shroud goes right over. And put your four screws back into place. Make sure when you're doing your connections for your fans that you do, in fact, remember to hook up the LEDs. Okay, so we've got the installation completed. Now you notice I did this installation outside the case. Um, honestly, it would be really kind of foolish to try and do it in the case uh, with this particular mount. Usually Cooler Masters are very good about going in uh, with the motherboard mounted in the case. This is not the case with the V8 GTS. Uh, you're definitely much better off pulling the motherboard out of the case and mounting outside the case, you're going to save yourself a lot of aggravation. You're going to spend a lot less time getting that motherboard out than you are with what you're going to contend with in the case, as you saw. Um, as you can see, very, very large cooler on the motherboard. One thing I do want to point out while it's still outside of the case, and you can get a look right here. Um, while the V8 GTS is a huge cooler itself, it's got a phenomenal amount of room between the RAM and the third tower, the outside tower right here. You can easily fit Vengeance or uh, G-Skill Ripjaws, Trident, anything of that nature. I don't know as far as uh, Corsair um, Dominator might be a little too tall. I mean, obviously something like Kingston Predator is going to be too tall, but um, the Vengeance Ripjaws Trident style RAM is going to be no problem whatsoever. Really nice design as far as that goes. As you can see, huge amount of room. Standard RAM just gets lost in there completely. So, good amount of room there. Really nice design right there. Installed in the case, there's no question that the V8 GTS is really a phenomenal looking cooler. Especially, I mean, if you're going for that theme, you know, the black industrial look, uh, automotive look with the red just really looks phenomenal. In a half case, it's just going to be really incredible. So also, uh, you notice it's, like I say, it's a huge cooler, but you've got a lot of uh, good working room around it and you've got good RAM clearance. Um, that's due to a very, you know, unique design, like we said, so it's really very workable inside the case. As far as the installation itself, um, I'm not going to chalk it up, you know, put it in the category of um, historically bad installs I've done, but it certainly wasn't among the easiest. Um, Following the directions by the letter is going to be really just uh, much more of a pain than it needs to be. Uh, you do need to actually 
improvise along the way, especially, I mean, if you got any heat sinks on your motherboard at all, you're definitely going to need to do some improvising and you're definitely not going to want to do it inside the case. So like I say, not a historically bad install, but definitely not among the better installs. Uh, just in remembrance, I'm going to remember it as an install that was much more difficult than it should have been and much more difficult than it needed to be if there were just a couple of small changes to the installation kit. But of course, the installation, these fantastic looks, don't mean a thing unless it can perform, and that's exactly what we're going to look at right now. So we put the VTA GTS through its paces in terms of design and build, uh, installation, and now performance as well in the case. Overall, I'm seeing a lot of give and take with the V8 GTS. Uh, something to keep in mind, the V8 GTS is a uh, cooler priced at $99.95. So we're going to have to look at it and compare it in terms of uh, coolers that are running in that same price range. So overall, I'm going to give the Cooler Master V8 GTS a High Tech Legion Silver Award. Now let me tell you why. In terms of performance, first and foremost, of, co uh, of course, uh, you are going to be able to get a decent overclock out of the V8 GTS. However, it doesn't keep up with the other 9995 top names. It's not going to keep up with the Fantex. It's not going to keep up with the Noctua um, in terms of performance. However, you will get a decent overclock out of it without running near the thermal limit. Now, if you're looking to do a theme build, I mean, obviously, you know, it's worth the trade-off to get the looks to give up a little in the way of performance. But if you're, you know, looking for something that's going to keep your CPU as cool as possible, get the highest overclock possible, the V8 GTS is not the way to go. You know, it's more of a showy piece than it is a performance piece in terms of that. However, like I say, it does a respectable job of cooling. It's just not going to keep up with the uh, high-end air coolers in terms of performance, and they're not going to keep up with it in terms of looks. Now, next thing, uh, fan noise. The VJ8 GTS was actually surprisingly quiet. Um, it didn't really ramp up to any uh, exaggerated noise levels at any point, even under load. Uh, I was actually very happy with it, especially, you know, day-to-day -day tasking, you know, just um, internet browsing, you know, when you're not really torturing your CPU, it's very, very quiet within the case. I mean, you hear it running at idle right now, and it's not overbearing in any way, shape, or form. It's pretty much imperceptible when the side of the case is on. Now, looking at the installation, like I say, not monumentally bad, but not something I'm going to want to do again in the near future. Um, can't do it in the case. Uh, if you follow the instructions to the letter, you're probably going to wind up pulling your hair out of your head. You need to take the fans out to make it easy, whether the instructions say it or not. Uh, getting the fans back in is a little bit finicky as well. But um, it's, you know, really an installation that could have and should have been significantly easier than it was with just a little bit more development on the installation kit. So, like I say, not monumentally bad, but not fun either. Um, in terms of build quality and design, I mean, fantastic. I mean, it looks great in the case. You've got plenty of working room around it. You've got a good amount of uh, RAM compatibility. Like I say, you're not going to have a problem fitting Vengeance in here. You're not going to have a problem fitting, you know, the Rip Jaws or Trident in here, anything of that nature, in all four RAM slots, which really, for a large cooler, is a huge thing to say. So, overall, like I say, the VHGTS is going to receive the High Tech Legion Silver Award. Um, you know, a lot of trade-off, looks and performance. Um, once again, you know, installation not stellar. The build quality is phenomenal, but um, overall, silver award. And um, if you're looking to theme piece, you know, I couldn't recommend it any higher.